In the Brazilian Amazon, the fruits of the jungle come in many shapes and sizes. On this reserve in Para State, people rely on the forest for most of their needs. Liza Santos Sampaio teaches the community how to live here sustainably, selling natural medicines, cosmetics and oils to buy the few things the jungle can't provide. Com certeza. A floresta... Food, medicine, animals, this is what the forest offers us. But with deforestation, this will all go extinct, along with the species that the forest protects and feeds. Brazil has the world's largest tropical forests, the greatest biodiversity. It sustains livelihoods and offers valuable services from storing carbon and retaining soil to providing habitat for wildlife. But how much of that bounty is reflected in national income accounts? The answer, not much. But that may be about to change. At the Rio Plus 20 Summit on Sustainable Development, the World Bank wants governments and businesses to commit to natural capital accounting. Now this means capturing information on natural assets that is now missing from national accounts. Natural capital accounting would add to GDP our understanding of the wealth that is stored in our natural resources, the wealth upon which we depend for a lot of that income, minerals before they are mined, forests before they are felled, water while it is still in the rivers and clean. If you want to know the financial health of a company, take a look at its balance sheet. Assets on the one side, liabilities on the other. A country's balance sheet would include assets such as roads and factories and the capital these produce, along with human and social capital like education and entrepreneurship. Importantly, it would also include natural capital. On the other side, you'd see the depletion of natural resources as they're used up through mining, industry, forestry or agriculture. But a country's national accounts and indicators like GDP don't provide the same information as balance sheets. GDP measures mostly produced capital. If you cut down a forest for timber, GDP goes up, but it says nothing about what's been lost in the process for future generations. So GDP really is like a little bee move, flapping its wings, you know, and GDP measures how fast you flap the wings, but it doesn't give you any sense of direction where the bee is going, if it's going to hit the wall, or if where is it going to go. So you can finance your development by depleting your resources. That is, you can eat away your capital and think that that is development, and that is really not development. That's just eating away capital. Lester Brown, founder of the Earth Policy Institute in Washington, says another limitation of GDP is that it's blind to the many benefits provided by living ecosystems. We value the wood, the timber in the forest, or the, or the paper we make from the wood, but we don't value the flood control service that forests provide. Um, we don't um, uh, include the capacity of forests, particularly on hillsides and mountains, to protect the soil from erosion. One of the reasons that natural capital accounting is important now is because we're beginning to see the consequences of not having it. So we have to rethink things in a fairly fundamental way if we want to create an economy that can be sustained for the indefinite future. In Thailand, a study shows mangrove forests are worth about $1,000 a hectare if exploited for wood, but left intact, their value for flood protection, carbon capture, and as a breeding ground for fish is in excess of $21,000 a hectare. In 43 countries classified as low income, the World Bank estimates that natural capital makes up 36% of total wealth. For many, it's the basis of their existence. Take the oceans. A quarter of a billion people worldwide rely on fisheries and aquaculture for their livelihoods. Natural capital accounting allows countries to measure who benefits and who bears the cost of changes to ecosystems. There are now internationally agreed standards to account for natural capital, especially when it comes to forests, minerals, and water. At Rio Plus 20, the World Bank will be asking countries to implement what they've already agreed to do, that is, to start using these standards to more accurately assess their wealth. If they do, the World Bank believes they'll make more informed economic decisions and be better equipped to manage their resources. More than 20 nations are already using the UN-approved standards. They include Australia, Botswana, Mexico, Spain, and the Philippines. Several others, like Madagascar, Costa Rica, and Colombia, plan to implement natural capital accounting. 
Meanwhile, there are initiatives to find globally agreed ways for businesses to account for natural capital as well. While the UN provides methods to compile accounts on some natural assets, there is still work to be done to capture the full benefits that ecosystems provide. Those benefits are immense. The economic value of insect pollination is estimated at $153 billion. Coral reefs provide benefits worth up to $172 billion. And globally, the annual value of conserving forests to cut greenhouse emissions is estimated at $3.7 trillion. Natural capital accounting does have its critics. Tom Griffiths of the Forest People's Program worries it could create market incentives to exclude the poor. Indeed, if we look at the history of the market in the developing world, there has been a process of dispossession, enclosure, privatisation, often to the detriment of the rural poor and rural communities. But Carolina Arutia, from Colombia's National Planning Department, says natural capital accounting is a way to safeguard resources. In the next few years, mining and oil will be of great interest. And we do have to make some decisions uh, determining land use and where to put our, our, our exploration and our resources and how we treat the, the strategic ecosystem services. Back in the Amazon, Liza knows well what is at stake. A única com recompensa da floresta é ela em pé. The sole reward is a standing forest, especially for us. We learn how to take from her while ensuring our subsistence and our sustainability when thinking about future generations. 